What are the odds of functional proteins arising spontaneously by strictly natural processes and integrating into complex systems? Molecular machines are made up of a number of parts, and those parts are generally proteins. Now, most people think of proteins as something you eat, but uh, we have found out that proteins are actually very intricately shaped machines themselves. They're made up of a uh, string of uh, things called amino acids. They're typically 100 to 500 amino acids in length, and they're very, very um, um, specifically shaped so that if one protein is like this, in order to bind the protein, it's got to have exactly the right shape to fit in with another one. In molecular machines like the flagellum and the uh, cilium and so forth, you know, dozens of molecular uh, of proteins are needed uh, to interact with each other in very specific ways to produce the function. Now, it turns out in the past decade or so, some scientists have looked to see what is the probability of getting just one of those proteins. And it turns out to be very, very, very difficult. Uh, a, uh, a man named Hubert Hyaki, uh, just by using uh, mathematical techniques, calculated the probability of finding just one single protein to be uh, 1 in 10 to the 65th, which is an extraordinarily low uh, probability. Uh, it's like finding one atom in the entire, one specific atom out of uh, all those in the entire galaxy. And this has been experimentally confirmed by a man named Robert Sauer at the, uh, at the um, at uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. That is, he has confirmed that it's very unlikely for these uh, uh, proteins to be produced. Now, a question arises, if it's so difficult to produce one protein, how do we get molecular machines which contain dozens of proteins, all working together in very specific ways? And the simple answer is we haven't a clue. That is, Darwinian theory hasn't a clue. Um, if, these, uh, if the proteins had to arise independently, then the probabilities would, would, would just go astronomical, even more astronomical, astronomical uh, very, very quickly. Another question is, <clears throat> in the cell, the cell replicates, but how does it replicate? It turns out that proteins, uh, protein machines, make new copies of DNA, but the DNA codes for the proteins that make copies of it. So there's this kind of circular loop where the DNA codes for the proteins and the proteins produce the DNA. How did that get hooked up in the first place? How did the DNA protein connection uh, get together? <clears throat> and again, it's a very brief answer. We don't know. Uh, there has been no um, experiment, even no theoretical investigation, on how that could have happened even though people have been interested in the question of the origin of life and, and so on for you know, many, many years. And the very intractability of this question, I think, points to the conclusion that we're just looking at this problem wrong. We're looking at, at it uh, through the wrong lens, a Darwinian naturalistic lens, and I think it might be time to, to take a fresh look.